Welcome to our thought for the day for Friday the 31st of July. My name is Suzanne Hoslip. Today's Psalm, Psalm 116. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you on the name of the Lord and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. This psalm appears to be written by someone describing a traumatic event which was quite personal to them but it is also their emotional response to the rescuing by the Lord that they've experienced from this event, an expression of their personal love for the Lord and an understanding of the personal redemption that they've known. A little bit of background to this Psalm before we think about how it applies to us. Psalm 116 makes it part of the Hallel, a Jewish prayer that is recited at festivals by the Jewish people. Hallel means praise from where we see the word hallelujah and it comprises the words of Psalm 113 through to Psalm 118. One of the festivals it is sung at is Passover. In Matthew 26 we read, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This psalm was probably part of that hymn. So as he went out to the place he knew would be his place of betrayal, Jesus may well have just sung. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. How must he have felt knowing that what was before him? But he knew that God would save him, that once more he would be able to say, for you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And so to us. The first verse of our psalm begins with, I love the Lord. This word love is one of loyalty and commitment, a total commitment, a 24 seven commitment, loyalty, commitment and loyalty to the Lord. That, lo that, that love that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. But why such devotion from this psalmist? Because the psalmist clearly knows that the Lord has heard him as he cried out for mercy because the psalmist knows that the Lord hears as he declares his devotion by stating that he will continue to call out forever. When I first began thinking about this psalm for this thought for the day, I remembered a time a few years ago when I found myself crying out in anguish, just like our psalmist. I was in distress, I cried to the Lord. I was wandering alone through a woodland, trying to make sense of a situation that I was in that was almost too painful to face and definitely one which I could not see a way out of. I admit that one of my thoughts was much like our psalmist in verse 11. Everyone is a liar. Of course, that isn't true, and it wasn't true then either. 
But the Lord is compassionate on us and does allow us to let off steam. But as I called out to the Lord, as I walked through those trees, I can say, just as our psalmist does in this psalm, that the Lord heard my cry and that the Lord truly had compassion on me. What was interesting was that the Lord didn't change the situation. I still had to face it, to go through it, and it was still very, very painful. But in that woodland, I heard the Lord speaking to me, and I knew the comfort of the words of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And as I faced that situation, I really knew that I was not going through it alone. I felt comforted. I knew a peace that I could not fathom as the Lord walked with me in it. So this first half of the psalm is something that I can relate to easily. But the second half is a lesson I need to keep on learning. Verse 12 reads, What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? So how often do we call on the name of the Lord to save us? But how often, like nine of those ten lepers healed by Jesus, do we forget to return to the Lord? There's nothing that we can return to the Lord except ourselves, of course, as we continue to call on him. As we heard earlier, this psalm is part of the Hallel, recited in remembrance of the amazing rescue of the Jewish nation, beginning with the exodus from Egypt. How much comfort must it bring to those people as they remember that they are a chosen people, a rescued nation, loved by the Lord. But how much more do we know Jesus, do we who know Jesus have to give thanks for? How much more can we remember all that the Lord has done for each of us when we have called on his name? Having just shared a little of a very painful time in my life, I feel challenged to ask each of us to try more often to share together those times that we have known the Lord hearing us and answering us when we have cried out to him. It doesn't mean that we need to share everything of those times. But by sharing with others, by telling of the Lord's amazing work in our lives, we encourage each other, telling of his faithful love for us. We need to remember these experiences, to give thanks for them in the presence of the Lord's people, and to know that like the psalmist, we can say, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Amen.